How will the recent rise in interest rates affect home prices? More specifically, how is it going to affect California home prices? Is it going to create a lot of supply, causing demand to back off, and house prices to drop, potentially crash? Or are we going to see the market move along like we have over the last couple of years? In today's video, we're going to look at the most recent data of what's actually happening in the California housing market. And we're also going to take a look at how monthly payments are affected with this rise in interest rates. And we're also going to talk about why this recent rise in rates isn't likely to affect supply quite like you think it is in detail. And hopefully with that, we're going to guide you through the idea of buying a home in California so that you can make sensible, informed decisions as a potential buyer. Since December 29th, we've seen over a 45% increase in interest rates. Back on December 29th of 2021, interest rates were sitting at 3.31%. As we ended March, March 30th, if you will, interest rates were sitting at 4.8%. And since then, we've seen interest rates creep above 5% for most well-qualified buyers out there. So interest rates have risen significantly. What does that actually look like on paper? Well, if you bought a $500,000 home with that 3.31 interest rate, that's a payment of $2,192 per month. That same payment just three months later is $2,623 per month. That's a 20% increase in the monthly payment in just three months. So that is definitely going to affect some demand out there. Those buyers that were stretching their budgets, trying to you know, reach into the next bracket of home prices because they were priced out of the first bracket or because home prices rose significantly from when they were originally looking, those buyers are likely to get priced out of the market to some extent. But at the same time, it may keep sellers in their property, it may keep sellers from actually wanting to sell their home. I'm going to go over an example here um, of you know somebody that I know that that purchased a home and what they're looking to do to give you an idea of why a seller might stay put in this environment just because of everything that's going on with rising house prices and rising interest rates. So these buyers purchased a $750,000 home and when they purchased it, they put 20% down. So they had a loan amount of $600,000. They were able to get a loan, a 30 year fixed at 2.99%. So that gives them a payment of $2,526 per month. Property taxes here in Orange County, where I'm located, roughly one and a quarter percent. So their property taxes are $781 per month. So their total monthly payment, $3,307. Now that's not including, you know, uh, hazard insurance and HOA fees and any sort of thing like that. But we're just going to compare apples to apples. So $3,307. Now they're at a point in their life. Now they purchased this property years ago. They're at a point in their life where they need more space because they have multiple kids. Um, you know, they they just want a bigger home, and so they're looking at a price point somewhere around a million two fifty to give them the space that they need. So that million two fifty home, if they were able to sell their current residence, that seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar home that they purchase now is is over a million dollars. So they're going to have the twenty percent equity that they originally put down, plus about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that they've gained in that property since they purchased it. But the price point in which they're looking is somewhere around a million two fifty. Now Let's be honest, there's not a lot of property out there at the moment that fits what they're looking for just because of the lack of supply. But let's say, for example, they're able to find that property at a million two fifty today. They put 20% down, so that's $250,000. They're financing $1 million per month. Their payment today on that $1 million at just 4.8%, which is the rate that we talked about at the beginning of the video, not even where rates are today, puts their payment at $5,246. In addition to that, their property taxes are now going to go up too because they're buying more property. And so $1,250,000 at one and a quarter percent property taxes are $1,302 per month. So their new mortgage payment would be $6,548 per month. 
that's a 98% increase from just when they bought just a couple of years ago. So you can see why a seller might stay put because the interest rate's higher than it was just three months ago. The home that they're looking to purchase has obviously gone up, which clearly that, that, that would be the case in, in most markets. When you're buying a bigger house, you're going to pay more money for it. So in this case, that makes sense. But that 45% increase in interest rate in just the last three months has caused their payment to go up nearly $860 on the home that they'd be looking to purchase. So that's a significant increase. And that's a reason why I think as interest rates go up, you're going to have some sellers that panic and think that this is the top of the market. They just want to get out, so they're going to sell. But you're also going to have sellers, and I think the majority of sellers are going to fit into this scenario where they're going to look at their interest rate, they're going to look at their monthly payment, and they're just going to stay put. Instead of putting their home on the market for sale, they're just going to stay put because it's likely to be more expensive to go out and try to rent something. And can you even find something comparable to what you have at the moment. And with all of this, it's likely going to keep inventory levels low. So demand is likely to fall off because of affordability, but at the same time, inventory levels aren't likely to build at a pace that's actually going to slow the housing market. And so with that, I believe the spring is going to bring some more properties on the market, but I don't believe it's going to be enough to actually slow housing. Now the biggest problem we've had with housing over the last couple of years is just the massive appreciation. It's not healthy. It's in fact it's it's really really not healthy. You know when you see 2 years of double digit gains back to back, that's not sustainable. And so what we're likely to see is an increase in supply by a little bit, a drop in buyer demand and a more sideways to up movement where you see more normal appreciation over the long run. And that's why you're seeing organizations like CoreLogic expecting a 5% increase in home appreciation in 2023. You know, that's why people are already doing forecasts out to 2023 saying, yeah, we think appreciation is still going to continue. It's just not going to continue at the current pace. And I think that's important because for anybody out there currently sitting on the sidelines waiting for home prices to pull back, you're likely going to end up paying more money for that house in the future or you're likely going to end up not buying at all, which is completely fine if that's what fits your lifestyle. You know, my goal with this video isn't to get you to buy a house, it's merely to provide you the information so that you can make the right decisions for you and your family. So let's take a minute here and talk about what it looks like. You know, if you are that family that I mentioned earlier that was you know looking to to upgrade their home if you will so that one million two hundred and fifty thousand dollar home if we saw a say five percent appreciation that takes that home up to a million three hundred and twelve thousand five hundred dollars and at the same time if interest rates do continue to increase and say interest rates go to five point five percent that's going to take that payment up to five thousand nine hundred and sixty one dollars per month in addition your property tax is going to be one thousand three hundred and sixty seven dollars so your monthly payment is going to be seven thousand three hundred and twenty eight dollars per month that's a seven hundred and eighty dollar increase or twelve percent just over what that payment would look like today so you're probably watching this video going jeb how can you say the housing market is going to continue to appreciate with interest rates going up, you know, and, and all of the crazy turmoil that's happening in the market? Well, let's take a minute here and actually talk about what's happening. As many of you know, and I've said it before, the market is based on supply and demand. What drives any market is supply and demand. And right now what we have is a lot of money chasing very few homes. And that's exactly what's happening here in the state of California, for example. We currently sit at 1.2 months of inventory. So a balanced market is six months of inventory. So we are significantly below where we would be in a balanced market. In fact, inventory would have to double and then almost double again to have a balanced market where buyers and sellers are working together. No one has an advantage. So at the moment, you have very few homes and a lot of buyers competing for them. And so you're probably saying, well, as interest rates rise, some of those buyers are going to fall out of the pool. Absolutely they are. 
But when you're going from a scenario where, you know, there's 20, 30, 40 offers on a home, you know, last couple of weeks ago, I wrote an offer for a buyer that had 67 offers. Yeah, let's say you lose 50%. Let's say you lose 75% of the buyers in those homes. Well, that means the house that has 20 offers now only has five, or the house that had 67 offers now just has 15, or whatever the number is. So demand isn't going to disappear entirely. It's likely to get less competitive out there. So with that, it could be a good time, if you're a buyer, to get into the market, even with a little bit higher interest rate, assuming you're not stretching yourself, assuming you have money in the bank, assuming you have a longer term time horizon, something I talk about religiously on my channel, not buying a home with the expectation that you're gonna sell it in a couple of years. So if you have all of that, it could be a good time to buy a property because what we know from history is that as the Fed starts to raise the Fed funds rate, which they've already started to do, as they get more aggressive on raising that Fed funds rate, it's likely to bring inflation down and historically as inflation has come down so have interest rates so you're likely to get a chance at some point in the future of being able to refinance that property into a lower interest rate but as a buyer i don't want you counting on that i don't want you buying a house and overextending yourself with the idea that you're going to be able to refinance in a couple of years and bring that interest rate down because maybe that doesn't happen. So that's why it's imperative that you have that longer term time horizon. It's imperative that you're comfortable with the payment and you're not stretching yourself. Now, the only unknown factor at the moment that's out there, and this is a real factor that could impact interest rates, making it even more difficult as a home buyer out there and affecting affordability way more than we've seen already, and that is if the Fed does decide to let their balance sheet run off. So recently, this last week, we've seen the Fed's Brainerd come out and say that inflation is way too high and they're going to let their balance sheet run off. Now, if they do decide to let their balance sheet run off, interest rates are likely going to rise. And the question is, how much? The answer is, I have no idea. They tried this in the past, you know, back in 2018, I believe it was, where they let the balance sheet start to run off, interest rates started to rise, and they basically came to the conclusion that this wasn't the right thing to do. They stopped the balance sheet runoff, or they slowed it, if you will. Interest rates improved, and then when they stopped entirely, interest rates got significantly better. So the Fed has a history of going, you know, letting the pendulum swing from one side to the other, you know, and in this case, going from very, very easy monetary policy to tightening it up significantly, which is what they're likely to do. We're likely to see the Fed go the other direction and do some crazy hikes, taking the Fed funds rate up into the mid to high twos, even threes, which is going to bring inflation down, but it's also likely to create a recession. So all of this playing into it, you've got to be able to make the right decisions for you. And with all of that happen, I don't expect the market to crash. Um, if anything, I think prices will level off. I think as a home buyer, you're, you're likely to have some more options to choose from, but I don't think it's going to create this massive change in the housing market where prices decline or, or anything close to that, right? So I just wanna be clear here that there are factors out there that are affecting housing like interest rates, like this potential runoff with regards to the Fed but I don't see it changing home prices because at the moment, I don't see anything that's going to increase supply significantly to a point where buyer demand would be higher than supply, which is ultimately what needs to happen in order to bring these house prices down in any big way. So if you're a home buyer out there looking at the moment, just remember days on market, the average home is on the market eight days right now in the state of California. So you still have to be quick when making offers out there. You can't wait um, you know, a couple of weeks to go see a property. And the reason it's eight days is because part of those days are, are negotiating days, right? Typically speaking, if a home goes on the market in a weekend, the seller's reviewing offers just a couple of days later. So you have to be quick in that process. The average home is selling at 104.2% of the list price, right? 
So if you have a home selling for a million dollars, on average, it's gonna sell for a million and 40,000. I'm seeing example after example where home prices are selling significantly more than that. So that's an average. So just remember, if you're out there, there's a good chance that you're likely gonna have to go above that asking price when making offers and the home's priced correctly. But the key to this is make sure you're working with a professional that can guide you through that process, help you get the comps in order to make the right decision. And if you need a professional, whether it's a, a mortgage expert or a professional lender, do me a favor, there's a link here where I can guide you and connect you with someone that I know personally to take you through that process and take good care of you. But the last thing I wanna to touch on in this video is the average homeowner gained $55,300 in equity last year alone. So anybody out there thinking that, you know, the market is going to crash has to take into account the amount of equity that's sitting in people's homes at the moment, right? That was just last year. And the year before we saw massive equity gain too. You know, there was a recent stat out that the average homeowner has $185,000 of tappable equity. That's on top of the 20% of equity that they currently need in order to tap that equity. So the average homeowner has a lot of equity in their property. Even for those buyers, they just put 3.5% down last year. Not only did they put 3.5% down, they gained $55,000 in equity, plus they made payments every month that paid down the principal balance of that loan. So that also got added to their equity. So if you do see a pullback in prices, you're not likely to see any crashes. If anything, you're likely to see prices sell. You're likely to see any distressed homeowners sell their property at market value, which is exactly opposite of what we saw during the last housing crash, where people absolutely needed to get out of their property, couldn't because there was so much inventory on the market, they had no equity, and they just had to, to let it go. This isn't that market. So just know what you're getting to if you're a home buyer out there looking to buy in this market. Lastly, I'd like to ask a favor. If you found any value in this video at all, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you wanna stay updated on everything real estate related. But if you're still wondering what's going on in the California housing market, I dive into it in more detail in this video. So check it out. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I appreciate the support. Hope to see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.